Mr Speaker, my question is to the Prime Minister and ask what role did he or his department play uh, in the decision to shift the Rugby World Cup quarterfinals from AMI Stadium to Eden Park? The Hon. Murray McCulley. Speaker, on behalf of the Prime Minister, under the terms of the host union agreement, all decisions relating to locations and venues for Rugby World Cup games are the province of Rugby World Cup Limited, a subsidiary of the International Rugby Board. With regard to the decision to move all Rugby World Cup games from Christchurch, the IRB, through RWCL, publicly signalled its wish to consult with other stakeholders, including the Government. This consultation occurred through the Minister for the Rugby World Cup, who discussed these matters with me. With regard to the decision to select Eden Park as the alternative quarterfinals venue, I understand that this decision was made by Rugby World Cup Limited on the recommendation of Rugby New Zealand 2011 on the basis of considerations outlined by Mr Martin Sneddon yesterday. The Government was informed but not consulted in relation to that decision. The the Honourable Trevor Mallard. Uh, did his office receive a report on or before the 7th of March which made it clear that there would not be sufficient accommodation in Christchurch for the quarterfinals? The Honourable Murray McCulley. Mr Speaker, uh, I'd need to check which uh, reports were received on which dates on behalf of the Prime Minister, but I can say that reports were received continuously in relation to accommodation from two different sources. Firstly, the Ministry of Economic Development officials were asked to uh, assess the situation and report to the Government from time to time, and Mr Sneddon, as the Chief Executive of Rugby New Zealand 2011, made his own assessment, uh, and this was reported to the Government from time to time. To be more precise, I would need to check uh, those reports. A question to the Prime Minister. Uh, when did he become aware uh, that an in-principle or provisional decision had been made to shift the quarterfinals to Auckland before Rugby World Cup officials began their trip to New Zealand? The Honourable Murray McCullough. Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister was not aware that any decision was made as asserted by that member. The Prime Minister was aware that officials from uh, the IRB were coming to New Zealand for the purpose of meeting with the other stakeholders, formally consulting and then making a formal decision in relation to the games scheduled to be played in Christchurch. The Honourable Trevor Mallard. Why did he, as recently as yesterday morning, hold out hope to the people of Christchurch that the quarterfinals would be held there when a provisional decision had been, or an informal decision, as he just replied, had been made that they would not. The Honourable Murray Mr McCulley. Speaker, the Prime Minister was uh, acting on the advice of the Minister for the Rugby World Cup. The Minister for the Rugby World Cup was told on Monday of this week that the board of VBase, the Christchurch City Council owned company that administers uh, AMI Stadium, was receiving a briefing from the engineers who had done their scoping work over the previous days. That meeting, I repeat, occurred on Monday afternoon of this week. Uh, on Tuesday of this week, the Minister for the Rugby World Cup met, went to Christchurch to meet with VBase to receive uh, details of that report and enter into discussions. And the following day, yesterday, uh, the parties all met, including the visiting IRB executives, to make final decisions. The Honourable Trevor Mallard. To the Prime Minister, why was he not involved in the announcement of the decision to shift the quarterfinals from Christchurch to Auckland? The Honourable Murray McCulley. Mr uh, Speaker, on behalf of the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister has enormous confidence in his Minister for the Rugby World Cup. <laughs> well, he was aware that that Minister was keeping closely informed of developments uh, in Christchurch and visiting Christchurch on Tuesday. Uh, the Prime Minister would not have been uh, aware in time of uh, the, of the uh, meetings taking place yesterday to have shifted his timetable to be there if he'd wanted to, but uh, that may, may well have been taken by his Minister for the Rugby World Cup as an indication of a lack of confidence, which would have been disappointing. The Hon. Trevor Mallard. Uh, to the Prime Minister, who, if anyone, advised him that attending to matters in his room was a higher priority than attending Parliament, while questions on this matter were being dealt with yesterday? The Hon. Murray McCulley. Mr Speaker, I think at the, at the heart of the member's line of questioning is a suggestion that somehow uh, the decision should have been made sooner and announced sooner. And I want to again repeat what I've said publicly. The people of Christchurch, who take great pride in their rugby prowess, 
have suffered a significant tragedy. The decision to take the, all of the Christchurch Games away for the Rugby World Cup is one that was made most reluctantly by all of those parties who were consulted by the IRB. For the member to suggest that somehow those decisions, which were indeed hurtful, should have been made without all of the evidence being assembled and properly considered by those parties is, frank, is frankly an insult to the people of Christchurch. Order. A point of order has been called. The Honourable Trevor uh, Mr Speaker, that was a very long answer to a question that wasn't asked. Uh, Mr Speaker, it was a very clear question as to whether the Prime Minister was advised uh, not to attend Parliament yesterday and to stay in his office. He did, that, that question was not answered. Well, order. I, I, if the Minister wishes to answer further, I'll sit down in a moment. But let me just point out that uh, it's against standing orders to make any reference to the uh, absence of a, a member from this chamber. Now, I didn't rule the question out because I wanted the Minister to have the opportunity to handle it the way he saw fit. And uh, I do accept that he didn't answer the particularity of the question. But uh, the question is, is a pretty marginal question anyhow. But if the Minister has anything further he wishes to add to it, I don't want to pre pre prevent him. The Honourable Trevor Mallard. Mr Speaker, I invite you to review the tape. My question was very carefully drafted. Uh, it, it gave no indication whether the Prime Minister accepted that advice if received. That is a very fine line that the member uh, points out, but the implication of the question was that the Prime Minister was not present in the House. But I do accept what the point the member makes, that the question didn't specifically say that. It asked who advised him uh, to be... Uh, well, I can't remember the exact wording. Uh, the, if, uh, I, I, if the Minister can give any further... Uh, if the Minister could uh, deal with the, the, the actual particularity of the question, that would be helpful. The Honourable Murray McCulley. So, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister is perfectly capable of making decisions uh, about his own diary and timetable without advice. And right at this minute, the Prime Minister is extremely uh, busy attending to important matters of state, which have been, been the result of some very, some, very tragic events, some very tragic events that have occurred in New Zealand in recent times. And that causes the Prime Minister to think very carefully about the allocation of his valuable time. The Honourable Trevor Mallard. Question. To the Prime Minister, did he personally deal with all paperwork received in his office on this issue, or did he treat it as he claimed to have done with the BMW issue as a matter for his Chief of Staff to take responsibility for? The Honourable Murray McCulley. Mr Speaker, um, the Prime Minister, as I indicated in my primary answer, has uh, taken uh, considerable advice from his Minister for the Rugby World Cup on this matter. That Minister has been closely engaged in dealing with the parties over recent weeks and, as appropriate, has been seen fit to inform the Prime Minister of developments as matters have proceeded. The Honourable Annette King. Can the Prime Minister explain while, why Stephen Joyce, who answered questions on this issue in the House yesterday, after the announcement was made, say on radio yesterday morning that no decision would be made for two days. The Honourable Mr. Mr Speaker, um, uh, I'm not familiar with the particular quotation that the uh, member refers to on behalf of the Prime Minister, but I, I can say that the uh, Minister of Transport was uh, answering questions yesterday, as I understand it, on behalf of the Minister for the Rugby World Cup who was, uh, I can confirm, consulting with relevant parties in Christchurch. Question number eight, Jack.